All right, done forging, time to grind. But I am terrible at doing bevels on the bench grinder and the belt grinder does not have enough kick left in its belt so I've made a scribe line across here to where I'm going to file the bevels in now. So I thought while I work on this I could talk to you a bit about hand filing bevels and why I typically prefer to use hand filing bevels over using a grinder. So first reason is that I'm just not good at keeping consistent with a grinder. Um, if you struggle to keep consistent angles on a grinder, you can use angled grinding jigs. You can even make some yourself. I'm planning on making some here pretty soon so I can use the belt grinder for bevels. But unless you have an angle jig for grinding or want to just keep practicing on scrap material, I like I would recommend just doing a lot of hand filing. It's also great practice because as you get more in-depth with stuff, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you just have to file. There's no power tool for it. And even if there is, you may not have access to it or be able to get one in time or use it on whatever your timeline is. And so hand filing bevels is really great exercise to just get better with files. And one of the tricks I've learned, and this is an angled blade so it makes it a lot easier, but I've done it on straight blades too, is to rather than going up and down, up and down, section by section, you just sort of want to run diagonally. Now you get less cut, but the little bit of less cut is a great trade-off for the fact that you get a way more even cut all across. Now, when your cut does go off, say you accidentally adjust your angle, you don't realize it, if you have good lighting, you should be able to tell. Uh, this isn't the optimal spot. I do have some fluorescent lights up above me. They're not the best. Uh, over on my other workbench that I've recently set up for hand sanding, I have a little light on a pulley that I can pull down with an LED, and uh, I recommend something like that if you really want to be very detail accurate. Um, this is just the primary bevel, so I'm not too concerned with it because we're still going to go back, do some more filing and grinding and everything after the hardening and tempering, and then we're going to put a secondary bevel on this. So I'm not too concerned about it being perfectly accurate right now. I'll fix that later down the road. But like I say, if you have a light, you can always tell from the way the steel catches the light what the angle of your chisel is at and just sort of how far off you are and you can figure out how to account for that and fix it. The other thing I want to say is don't rush your bevels. I've done this in the past and I've really regretted it. Never rush your bevels or you'll end up having to just go back and do it all over again and that's just no fun. The other thing I'll say is I typically would recommend sitting down. When you're standing up there's too much room for movement of your arms and your legs and everything and so I always like to sit down when I'm hand filing bevels. It just allows me to have a little bit better control. Another thing I would recommend doing is being able to being able to plant your feet somewhere. So like right now I have my left foot down here planted beneath this beneath this white workbench and, uh, and these are steel toe boots so I'm using those to sort of secure myself and that keeps me from adjusting my entire body and so then my arms and shoulders can take the brunt of the work and just keep working away. All right, we've got the bevel all ground, and it's all filed up nicely. And now comes the scary part, which is hardening. 
Now on this particular piece, I'm only going to harden the edge and a little bit back behind it. I've never done this type of hardening before. I've always quenched the whole blade, tang and all, but I think for this particular piece with the single bevel, it'll be best to just harden from the tip to about here. All right, I've got just the edge of the blade sticking in behind the doors and I got the forge burning on a nice low heat. You can see that straw and steel blue starting to come up the edge. So we're heating up, it won't be too long before we need to quench. Come check and see if it's straight. All right, I've got it out of the quench and I gave it some t file tests and it's glassy on the edge and the tang is just getting eaten up, which is really nice. It's exactly what I want and I used my most aggressive files to be sure that it had a good hard edge. So now I'm gonna clean it up and put it in the temper. All right, the blade is out of the temper and I'm improving the belt grinder. I got a bigger drive wheel on and I was going to replace the old half inch tensioning wheels with some that were about an inch and a half. However, there's currently a big storm going on. Time to hand sand. Using the CP hand sanding sticks for this, you can pick some of these up at creatingpassionshop.com. And if you're wondering what you should use for a cutting fluid, I personally like to use motor oil, but we have an entire video dedicated to it. I'll have it up in the top corner there. You can check it out. I know I should shut up about my own products, but every time I get to use one of these hand sanding sticks, it is just a joy. These things have three different bevels for getting in all sorts of grooves and getting in tight spots. It has a little rounded out piece here for getting in little areas when you're working around across those and stuff, that helps. The angles help for filing in bolsters. And for when you have a specific spot that you need to work on, the full beveled edge right here just helps you get in one specific spot that just needs more work than the rest. And it's just so nice to use these. I definitely recommend using one of these. Like I say, if you want to pick one of these up, you can get them from creatingpassionshop.com or you can watch my video I put out a few months back on how to make your own. If you use the double-sided masking tape and hot glue trick to mount your pieces to a block of wood while hand sanding, when you need to flip it over, you can also use the edge of your hand sanding stick to pry your blade up so that you don't accidentally pop it off and destroy the nice finish you've just gotten. I promise at some point I'll stop plugging my own products, but honestly, these things are just so nice. Time for side two. And the Kiridashi is done. This thing came out so much better than I ever could have hoped. It is absolutely razor sharp. It is slicing through paper. It is shaving hair. It is amazing. I am so impressed with it. If you want to get your hands on this beautiful blade, you can check it out. There will be a link down in the description, creatingpassionshop.com. There will also be a link to the hand sanding sticks I was talking about earlier. I highly recommend using some of those. They are just fantastic for knife making. That is gonna do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Again, I would really appreciate it if you would go check this out. It is a great blade, and even if you don't buy mine, I would highly recommend getting yourself a Kiridashi. They are just a phenomenal knife.